Companies operating in Africa engage with the environment and communities in a range of different ways. Interventions span from philanthropy and CSI to corporate social responsibility and creating shared value. Regardless of the context, the common thread must be sustainability. Hi, I'm Natalie Becker, and today on It's Africa's Time, we look at three South African organizations and their commitment to the country's economic, social, and environmental development. But first, we chat with Ilana Makebo Massa, Head of Research and Evaluation at Greater Capital, who'll share with us her insights in relation to CSI, CSR, and shared value. Greater Capital is a social investment consultancy. We provide advice that um, helps corporates develop and contribute to socioeconomic development in the country. Shared value is a new trend. It's looking into doing business with a long-term sustainable view that helps the bottom line, the financial returns of a business, but also the society, the communities and the environment around it. Each company needs to find the shared value strategy that really works for them. Each strategy needs to look into at least three key components. One of them is understanding who their stakeholders are. So who are the people that have an impact on the business and who are the people that the, imp the business is actually impacting. Corporates need to understand where their new markets uh, will be coming from. Where is the demand going to grow, to making their own business sustainable? The third key element is to understand um, how stable is their su supply chain. And if not, their responsibility and be to, to grow that supply chain for themselves. In 2009, we were approached by Tracy Gilmore and Tracy Chambers, who are now founders of the Clothing Bank. The idea worked perfectly for us because it actually gave us an opportunity to do two things, take care of our surplus clothing and make sure it's distributed in a way that's more responsible and more efficiently. But at the same time, it gave us an opportunity to empower a whole lot of women who would never have got the opportunity to be empowered as they are now. The two Tracys developed a holistic methodology and have achieved significant success in training unemployed mothers to run small retail training businesses. One of the key tools that we use at the Clothing Bank is obviously recruitment. We need to recruit the right candidate and we're looking for people that are self-motivated with a very strong work ethic. We have a holistic approach to training. But our coaching is the glue that keeps our organisation running. All women meet with a life coach for two hours every two weeks and she helps them work through any personal barriers that they may be having towards their success. Each woman is allowed to spend two and a half thousand rand at the clothing bank. We obviously they don't have two thousand rand in their back pocket so we lend them five hundred rand to get started and they go out into the communities, sell that clothing and come back with a profit and buy more clothes. We suggest that the women mark their clothing up by 2.5 times what they purchased it for. One of the key indicators of success and sustainability for the clothing bank program is the fact that the women who get, get to participate come up with a qualification that they wouldn't have. Uh, for example, the program ensures that their skills are translate to a NQF level 4 qualification, which is an equivalent of a metric. It means even if we're not involved with those women um, in the few years to come, they will have a skill where they can actually get jobs or do some other meaningful things about their lives. So Liswa, how do you market your clothing? I market my clothes at home. Then sometimes I took my bag and knocked to the community doors and sell my clothes. Zaliswa sells men's, women's and children's clothing, as well as linen and accessories to members of her community. This year, 101 women like her earned an estimated 3.1 million rand in their collective business, which they invested towards their families' living conditions and education. 
becoming financially independent and planning their future business. The Clothing Bank to Woolworths is an empowerment program where we have an opportunity to empower women, which is a part of our bigger vision. Investment by committed corporate citizens like Woolworths often spans the spectrum of engagement. And having just visited a key beneficiary of the company's corporate social responsibility, we now look at a shared value intervention and how it creates economic value in a way that also creates value for society. The farming community worldwide and final food retail customers are immensely aware today of the importance of good practices in agriculture. For example, we know that excessive use of pesticides can impoverish agricultural soil and can eventually lead to certain pests being more resistant. With their Farming for the Future initiative, Woolworths encourage and monitor sustainable farming techniques at the farms, which supply fresh produce to their stores. Today, we're with the farmer Flip Nell on a vegetable farm in the South African Highveld, where he's going to explain some of the interesting processes. Tell me, who sets the standards of practice for the farmers who partake in farming for the future? So the first one, of obviously, will be the farmer and who has to have the expertise and the know-how in order to uh, do it in practice. Secondly, there is an international certification which we call Global GAP. The GAP stands for Good Agricultural Practices. And then the third was introduced by Woolworths, or what we call Farming for the Future. And that is a set of uh, standards to which all your agricultural practices will have to comply and that Woolworths has outsourced the auditing function to a private company of experts. They visit the farms annually and uh, at that, uh, then they monitor all the aspects, uh, different aspects of farming for the future to see whether a farm is complying to all the requirements. We've seen some incredible improvements in farming methods and farming practice over the last couple of years through Farming for the Future. Big reductions in pesticides, chemicals, fertilizers, big increases in compost use and the promotion of water management, which in a water scarce country like South Africa is a really big contribution. We're also seeing more um, interesting biodiversity stories coming from the farms. Farmers telling us about bird species, insects and animals returning to their farms for the first time in many, many years as well. The advantage of having your own nursery that you can make sure that you uh, comply to all the demands and the requirements that's going with farming for the future. The other advantage is that when you take your seedlings from the nursery, it uh, can be transplanted very quickly without giving the plants that shock of transport or maybe waiting a couple of days to be transplanted. When agricultural practices are not focused on sustainability, after a certain number of cultivations, the soil becomes depleted. Yet, on a crop growing farm, soil is the most important resource. With farming for the future, soil life is managed through the introduction of organic material in the form of compost. Microbial life in the soil is an invisible workforce that restores its structure and texture. Therefore, not only does compost feed the plants, but it also improves water, oxygen and nutrient penetration in the soil. If you've got healthy soil life, you've also got balance in your soil. And where there's balance, the one or the harmful species cannot increase to such an extent that they can harm your crops. This greenhouse is a classic example of where old technology and new technology can be combined. It is totally enclosed, enabling the use of insecticides to be completely eliminated. And by using mulch, aerating the soil properly and disinfecting everything that enters the greenhouse, disease-causing microorganisms are prevented from entering. So all in all, we can say that by applying the modern technology, you can reduce your costs, increase your yields, and make more efficient use of all your resources, like soil, like water, and also fertilizers that you've got to apply.
and then the next big step for us is really to take the model and adapt it to the dairy supply industry. After that, hopefully the next thing is to actually look at meat production and see which principles are applicable for that industry as well. Farming for the future is part of Woolworth's good business journey towards creating shared value for the triple bottom line of people, planet and profit. PPC is the leading supplier of cement in Southern Africa. The company's commitment to corporate social investment emphasizes skills development and job creation in the context of high national unemployment. It's Africa's Time visits Time for Change in Johannesburg and the Field Band Foundation in Kimberley to look at the holistic impact of this investment. Time for Change has various income generating projects, including a micro bakery, handicrafts, and most recently, a sewing project, all aimed at helping adults and children who are living on the streets. There are over 30 full time members working in the cooperative now, and today we chat with Barbara Hill, founder of the project, Francis Shaniwa, and Sia Bonga, a remarkable young man who's overcome tremendous challenges and is an inspiration to all who meet him. Most of the people that we are having here are brought here by police and some are brought by the other NGOs. So NGOs like New Life, they always uh, go out to get the girls from the streets and they are the ones that brings the people to us. PPC identified this project as far back as 2004. We wanted to look at a project where we actually empower people and it's got a lasting effect. Social issues are a business. And in a business, you invest to make money. In this, we invest in people to change lives. This place is a buzzing of skills development. We started with a bakery, but uh, we have found that the bakery has become a cash cow. And using that funds, we've gone into sewing. The whole idea is to have this place as a manufacturing center, employing and run by people who have been marginalized before, people who have lived in the streets, People have been abused, people have grown up as orphans. PPC invests in equipment for these income generating and skills development projects, with Francie Shoniwa also providing business strategy mentorship. The sewing business main products are uniforms, protected clothing and hospital linen for public and private institutions in different Southern African countries. What inspired me to start rapping is the, my past, my present and my future and everything that I see around me. The Abonga stands out because he's not just academically gifted, He's also an artist. He's a child who has conquered all the disadvantages that he has faced and is standing up. Well, my personal journey was difficult, was hard. I've been through a lot in my life. At TFC, I've learned a lot to communicating skills, uh, to work with people and uh, to do different things. When he arrived, Siabonga trained in virtually all the skills that the center had to offer. And he studied hard at the school where Time for Change enrolled him. As a result, he's now studying engineering at the prestigious Witts University in Johannesburg. Well, at Witts, I'm studying um, in chemical engineering. It's my third year. I hope one day I'll own my own charity uh, organization, uh, working with disadvantaged people and abused uh, women and children. My dreams for the future of Time for Change is to have these children running this shelter one day when I'm no longer around because I've seen it has helped so many and it has changed so many lives. Two decades ago, no one had faith in the city of Johannesburg, but what happened next was one of the world's most fascinating experiments in urban renewal. Fortunately, Johannesburg is quietly winning back its inner city core. The future also seems brighter by those ignored by urban development if NGOs like this one can get all the support they need to give them something to build upon. Time for Change is the provider of outfits for the Kimberley Field Band, another organization supported by PPC with funding. So let's meet next in Kimberley, in the Northern Cape Province, and listen to their beats. Coming up percussion, one, two, three, and... 
Come along now, ready? The Field Band Foundation has bands across South Africa, four of which are proudly sponsored by PPC. The Kimberley Band has been coordinated by Peter Papi Aron since 2005. Peter's passion for the band, along with their hard work, have earned them first place in the National Field Band Championships for four consecutive years. The foundation tutors three groups in Kimberley's townships, which all rehearse for four hours a week. It's Africa's Time is invited to one of these rehearsals in preparation of their performance at the regional festival. It is a life-changing opportunity which I have experienced myself over the past 11 years of teaching in the foundation. I started playing the trumpet and I participated more even on a, an exchange program in Norway and it is when I came back I even plowed back into the, the community. The Field Band Foundation creates life-inspiring opportunities for the underprivileged youth, even though over 90% of their recruits have never played an instrument before. Through the discipline and creativity of music and movement, they also gain confidence and learn social and leadership skills, which will keep them away from gangsterism and carry them forth into adult life. The band members are between 10 and 21 years old, and according to their likes, their natural skills, and the needs of the band, they're assigned to one of its four sections, brass, marching percussion, steel drums, or dance. The main projects within the Field Band Foundation, we have the FBA, which is called the, F, the Field Band Foundation Academy, um, whereby we send all our senior tutors to be furthermore trained at the academy, and. Um, to also work more on life skills and teaching programs so that they must be able to work better within the foundation. The HIV program is where we have all our learners into uh, voluntary counseling and testing uh, so that they must be able to prevent themselves from getting either infected by the virus. Children in Distress program is a program whereby we look at our members' uh, specific needs, uh, for example, school uniforms, blankets, and you actually see their home environment and try to assist on that regard. Coming up, percussion. One, two, three, and. Now, on, listen ready? to the big band coming together, saying one band, one, one sound, two, and lots one, of more. today's program by taking a look at innovative and sustainable healthcare. First, we witnessed the Best Care Always campaign being implemented at Mediclinic Fergelirchen. Then we see how quality healthcare can be made available to a broader section of society through intervention and training. We support the Department of Health's vision of greater access, affordable, quality health care as proposed by the National Health Insurance Scheme. This is in line with MediClinic's commitment to a sustainable South African health care future. We believe that we have to focus on infrastructure and innovation. This is critical in this context and therefore we will continue to invest significantly in capital projects, in new equipment in order to enhance our business. MediClinic Southern Africa Hospitals participate in the Best Care Always campaign, the purpose of which is to promote collaboration between public and private hospitals and to prevent healthcare associated infections through the implementation of bundles. So healthcare associated infections are associated with, with hospital care, so if you do develop an infection in hospital it's often healthcare associated uh, because of the devices we put in, things like central lines. Central lines are not put in in non-critically ill patients, they put in often in emergency situations. So CLAPSI is central line associated bloodstream infections. Um, 
And the big thing with regards to prevention is actually the correct sterile insertion of the line. These common best practices or bundles may sound complicated to some of us, but they are crucial in understanding the importance of collaboration to ensure patient safety and sustainable healthcare management. Public-private initiatives are a component of MediClinic's overall approach to sustainable healthcare. This involves collaborating with government hospitals to provide much-needed surgical support in various disciplines. Through such partnerships, a broader section of South African society is able to access quality healthcare. The Kimberley Cataract Project is actually one of our largest CSI projects we've ever undertaken. We have realized that there's a huge backlog in terms of what the public sector can uh, master. And as the private sector, we felt we have to get involved. And so we're really very excited to partner with the public sector in this project. This three million rand project forms part of the first year of the company's structured CSI strategy. An agreement was reached with the Department of Health to address the backlog of cataract operations which exists in the province. A team of private ophthalmologists, together with senior medical officers and anaesthetists from the Kimberley Hospital complex, operate on these patients on weekends, when MediClinic Kimberley has spare theatre capacity. To make the joint collaboration a success, the Kimberley Hospital also provides pharmaceuticals and transport for patients, some living up to 300 kilometres away. But cataract blindness in South Africa and most third world countries is our biggest uh, cause of uh, blindness where we can help patients that don't have the funds, makes a huge difference in their lives. Once a year there's the Right to Sight project and the, the Eye Care Awareness Week here in October where everybody over the whole country tries to, to do as much surgery as possible and, and the, the, a lot of um, Emphasis put on the doctor, but the whole theatre team and all the other doctors involved at their share. We get the pupil here and then we get the lens and this is where our problem lies. Uh, this lens becomes hazy over time as people get older and through some diseases like diabetes. What we basically do with this kind of operation, we make a small incision from the side, uh, another second small incision, then the front membrane of the lens that's sitting here, we open up in a circular way. That is the optic part where the patient sees through and that's the little legs that positions the lens nicely in place. Then the hard part of the lens we take out with this ultrasound or phaco emulsification machine. The soft part we take out with the same machine just without any ultrasound and then we put in a new foldable lens through the small opening that kicks out and, and goes to sit into place there. And then about four weeks after that then we send the patients for their new glasses which then gives them a, a, a broader spectrum of vision afterwards. I waited six years for the operation. It's not everybody that does things like this. It was really a blessing to have somebody come forward and see to us. Many of the challenges that the Southern African healthcare sector faces are universal to the rest of Africa, such as the very high burden of disease and the critical shortage of healthcare professionals. To overcome the shortage of healthcare professionals, particularly nursing professionals, MediClinic took the deliberate step to become a registered tertiary education institution. Today we have six learning centres, two satellite campuses, and we train more than a thousand nurses on an annual basis. We believe that uh, healthcare is a need that should be available to everybody. We need to ensure collaboration. We need to ensure a scientific approach in the implementation of government's policy of greater access, affordable, quality healthcare for all our citizens. This policy, however, can only be realized if we ensure that we leverage the skills of all our role players. The private sector is willing and able to make a significant contribution to this goal. From a mediclinic perspective, this opportunity we look forward to. Triple bottom line, sustainability, corporate social responsibility, they're all terms that are really closely linked together and used interchangeably. They all place the emphasis on a different angle, but at the end of the day it's about sustainability for businesses, for society and for the planet. Africa is perceived to be the new growth market around the world, especially after the financial crisis. 
And while we are a continent full of opportunities in terms of huge human power and natural resources available, um, we are also a continent full of needs and challenges that um, are currently not being fully addressed. Companies that want to then succeed in Africa are going to, for their own sake, have to invest into the growth of the continent. And um, that will have a positive impact for their businesses and will have a positive impact for the continent itself. Thank you for being with us on It's Africa's Time and do join us for our next episode where we discuss sustainable resource management with Altius Holdings, Exaro and Oceana. Thank you.